All right. You got a client named Gary, 60 years old, rides a hog, never wears a shirt covering anything more than the upper part of his arm, 12 months out of the year, loves the sun, never drinks water, and lives a generally unhealthy lifestyle. I've had one of those. So today let's talk about how to stretch different types of skin. Yeah. Now that that's over, how to stretch different types of skin. So the previous statement is just kind of like an illustration of how wild and different our skin can be. I like to think about this on basically a linear way, right? Where we'll have super dry skin on one Y, on one side, super dry. And we're gonna have very oily on the other side, right? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And in the middle is just going to be normal. Normal is going to be different wherever you go. I mean, it just depends on race, even like your style upbringing and elevation, different environmental factors, things like this. But we'll just consider normal is normal to you wherever you're at. Um, so like the, the Gary on the hog thing is usually going to fall under the super dry thing. So why is this important? Why are we trying to stretch the skin? And how is it different than somebody whose skin is maybe like overly moist? If you don't like the moist word, I use it a lot. Sorry, just get over it. Um, so there's a few reasons why. One, the drier that your skin gets, the less moisture that's actually apparent inside of it, the closer that the skin cells are gonna be, right? It actually shrinks the skin. It increases the amount of effort that your body's trying to do to get rid of those skin cells because they're just like dead, they're packed in there, it wants to get rid of them, right? So you're gonna see a lot of sloughing. As I say, like ashiness, things that are just gonna be like dropping off, right? Higher skin shedding quantity is just gonna be, it's gotta go somewhere. It doesn't just keep building up until we're like, you know, that, that thing guy in Marvel or whatever. Um, it's gotta come off. So usually the super dry skin that you're gonna to try to like tattoo is gonna be less accepting of a decent stretch. Because if you stretch it too much, you hit it with a needle, especially as the person gets older, it just tends to split, right? So if you see somebody who comes out with a super dry, like, texture, space of skin, or whatever that you're working on, think about how hard you're actually stretching the skin. Try to start out with as little as possible of a stretch, right? We're gonna be doing less than, I don't know what a value of, like less than one. We'll just do that, how's that? One is our, this is your standard stretch, value of one. So we're gonna wanna go less than that. Let's just take it like, you know, do it half strength. Try running your line. See how much the needle's gonna be bouncing off the skin. And, you know, slowly adjust your actual stretch until you get the needle to the depth and like how it feels, right? Right. <laughs> and the drier that it is, usually the least amount, you have to use less and less and less pressure for it to actually happen. Otherwise you start getting blowouts. You start having just the skin and you can see it. If you're using a mag and you're scupping sideways or something, you can see the skin just naturally split. Like you're almost flaying it off the body. It's disgusting. So don't stretch too much. If you stretch too much, it's just gonna create a horror show. Lots of bleeding. Which if you see blood when you're tattooing, that's not good. <laughs> that means you've gone too far. Um, anyways, so stretching normal skin is just a normal stretch, right? That's just what we do. We're just pulling off on the tension so that our needle is going down and it's able to reach that top layer of the dermis and deposit the pigment effectively. Usually you're gonna see a bit of give off of skin where it's able to bounce and maybe vibrate with the actual machine that you're using. Um, which we should get into that. That'd be a good thing to talk about. Reciprocation of skin and the machine, how you can time it anyways. Um, so yeah, this would just be our value of one, right? Normal stretch, it's pretty simple. You, everything you're doing seems almost effortless, right? It's very rare that we have a person to come in to get a tattoo that just has normal skin. You know, it's just it. Um, anyways, very oily skin on the opposite side, right? We're gonna have to do value greater than one on this because their skin is super pliable, right? You can stretch the living hell out of it. And sometimes even when you're doing it, it feels like the needle's just bouncing off the skin. Uh, I've seen people, I, this is like 2002 or something, 2003, grabbing someone's arm and just like trying to pull all that skin as tight as they could to even see if the needle would go in and just kept bouncing off the top of it. If you have Ehlers Danlos or other, you know, medical conditions, make sure you tell your tattoo artist before you get a tattoo uh, that you have those things. That way they can try to approach the tattoo a bit differently. But usually if it's very oily, you're going to have to put in a bigger stretch. Um, this also goes in line with like, those skeletal muscles inside of your skin, right? If you have very oily skin, it's, it's difficult sometimes to get that needle to go in the skin, right? So what we have to do is really make sure that our stretch is on point, 
that it's like just the right amount of tension we need to that's not overstretching or understretching the skin and then it's running with those muscles that are in the skin right as soon as they start to align it's going to allow that skin to be pulled a little bit further than if you're pulling against it right there's extra resistance that's going that way so you can feel it if you can stretch the skin let's say on a forearm you're pulling it and just kind of like work around in a circle right if you're pulling pulling and one side seems to move a little bit further than the other that's your stretch point and that's when you start moving all your lines anyways how to stretch different types of skin think about the linear graph i mean yeah there's there's of course going to be things that are in between here right but just make it make a general just a general approximation is it normal super dry very oily if it's anywhere in between there just adjust that value of how much you're stretching the skin that's it this is ryan from bettertattooing.com signing off